Hey, it's Andre from the High Performance Academy and we're here with Philip from Electrons. Now Electrons is the company based in New Zealand that manufacture both the Link and Vipec brand of ECUs. Now Philip, first of all, could you just give us a little bit of insight into what separates the difference between the Link and Vipec brands, because I know that confuses a few people. Yeah, sure Andre. Well the, um, the Vipec brand is what we call our premium brand and uh, then we have differentiation to the Link brand. So when you purchase a Vipec, all features are enabled and it's uh, basically everything taken out to its max. The Link is the more uh, cost-effective brand. So each run the engine as well as each other, but with the Link to get the various features, you have to do an upgrade. So if you want e-throttle control or if you want the full 25 channels of logging, you pay an upgrade. So the Link ships, for example, with 15 channels of logging. The Vipec has everything turned on. And then the Vipec has a few additional features and uh, we've got some other tricks coming up our sleeve to differentiate it further. But typically uh, they are 20 to 30% more in cost, but you get everything. So a Link fully optioned costs more than a Vipec. Okay, so if we've got a, a Link, we fully optioned it, even then the Vipec is still going to have a few features and as you're saying, potentially a few more to come that uh, the Link won't benefit from, that's correct? Yeah, that's correct Andre. So things like the mixture map, for example, is a good example. That is a Vipec feature that we developed for the Vipec dealers. Okay, that's great. Now, I know that you've just recently released your brand new G4 Plus range of ECUs and that, that's been a, a really exciting move forward. You've got a lot more features in the pipeline. Can you just give us in a nutshell sort of two or three of the, the main features or advancements that have come with the G4 Plus over the existing G4? Yeah, uh, well the digital knock is a big thing I think, where you've got the full knock windowing. That's a, a big one. Uh, in the logging, the fact that it now loops with the logging and you can turn on and off the individual channels. Uh, people were having to download these huge log files and it might have 10 channels of information they're not interested in. Now if you're doing say an endurance race, you can slow down the rate and just target the things you're interested in. That's another uh, big one. The um, trigger scope and goes with, hand in hand with the digital knock. Uh, they would probably be the, the, the biggest ones, plus the G4 platform, that micro was uh, maxed out, people were running out of um, maps to tune in, so more maps and also it gives us a platform for future development, whereas the G4 we're, we're running out of space basically. I know from my own tuning we've, we've had some sophisticated engines, maybe six or eight cylinder engines on a G4 Extreme ECU and if you want to use individual cylinder fuel control and knock control perhaps, it's quite easy to run out of tables. So the G4 Plus that addresses that with the new microprocessor and additional tables, that's correct? Yeah that's correct and we're, we're amazed with the flexibility of the system, the features the, using uh, conditional um, uh, internal switching and things, people come up with all sorts of clever ways to get the result they need and yeah they just run out of tables to do it. I think uh, for, for me as a tuner the, the trigger scope feature is probably one of the, the most powerful yet, yet it's quite a simple system to visually see what the trigger inputs, uh, trig 1 and trig 2 from the crank and cam potentially are doing visually on the screen and then you can log that, you can save it and you can email it through to Link for technical support. Now that's going to save the end user the cost of, of going out and buying an oscilloscope, that's correct? Absolutely and even when they've got an oscilloscope um, often tech support spend as much time helping them to set it up whereas with the trigger scope we can just grab it straight out of that and uh, get really concise information as to what is, as to what is going on and uh, sometimes the solution has nothing to do with the ECU it's because the uh, sensor is vibrating or something else but we can see it really clearly and then it's always, we're see, always seeing the same layout which is really important. Yeah. Okay, now one of the new products that I wanted to talk to you today about is, is this uh, new dash you've got here. Uh, so you, you previously had the display link uh, yep. display unit which was more of just a display for the ECU parameters rather than a fully featured dash. Uh, you've now come out with the new link engine management uh, dash. Can you give us a little bit of information about how that works and what it does? Yeah, well the, the, the market, um, you know, people want a nice looking uh, dash and uh, in the kit car world and things too, people wanted a dash with an odometer. Um, this is, we've, we've chosen to settle on the race technology dash, which has the built-in indicators, odometer, that sort of thing, as well as being a fully configurable race dash. And uh, with the GPS input and things as upgrades you can do through race technology. So we've, we've taken their premium dash as being the one that we wanted to use. 
and um, then people can add the other features as they need. But it's a nice looking piece of kit. Uh, it's what the Super Tourers use. Uh, we've been very impressed with them as a company to deal with. And uh, at the moment, we, we haven't got it on the market yet because we're waiting for custom cables where our cable, our, our bayonet fit cable will plug straight in. Um, so it's, it's something that people have been asking for. Yep, display link's great, things have moved on. Uh, the other thing, of course, is with the OBD2 output, which we did for people that have to have that for their certification, of course, with our smartphones and things, as you've mentioned in a previous presentation, um, people are now using tablets and things to display in streetcars. So the whole um, making what's happening in the computer visual and, um, and accessible is, is, is a big way people are going. Okay, now with, with the dash, you've got some warning lights up the top here, so I, I understand from looking at the dash previously, we can use those for warning lights and also for a, an onboard shift light, so that's taking that out of it, you don't need a, an external shift light module. Is shift, are these dashes capable of logging, or do we need to do an upgrade to get that logging feature enabled? I'm not completely sure. I think they do have some logging, but what we've done is we've bought the top dash at a minimum spec that will give the presentation of the ECU information, and then the customer can choose with race technology how much they add on to it. It's all just activated online. Yeah, I know I know from looking at race technology uh, that there are a lot of options, and, and obviously some of them are quite advanced and probably go beyond most users' requirements. You can also uh, wire external sensors straight into the dash as, a, as opposed to wire them into the ECU. So look, that, that's a really exciting product and I think it's, um, it's, it's about time we've got a display available that um, easily interfaces with the, the Link G4 and um, is, is going to give uh, customers with race cars or home, uh, you know, scratch built cars uh, a great option for a, for a dash display. I look forward to seeing HP Academy's um, presentation on how to set it up. <laughs> I'm sure I'm sure that will come as well, Philip. Look, um, thank you for the time you've taken to talk to us today. I certainly am looking forward to seeing what you guys come up with with the uh, new microcontroller and the G4 Plus in terms of the new and exciting features that I'm sure you've got planned. And uh, we look forward to uh, covering some of those as they come up. Thank you very much. Thank you. And I also, for the HP Academy uh, people, if you've got ideas or applications or ways that you've done, let us know because we, 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 it's, we need that feed of ideas and things and because that's where, that's how we develop the product. It all goes on to what we call the wish list and then we ask dealers which, what's the most important and that's how we build the product up. Easiest way for everyone to do that right now is probably to jump on to uh, www.linkecu.com, get involved in the forum there and maybe uh, voice, your, uh, voice your ideas for new products there. Would that be a reasonable way of doing it, Philip? Yeah, absolutely, and preferably register in your own name because then we can start that dialogue. Okay, great. Thanks again for your time, Philip. Thank you very much. For online tuning courses, visit learntotune.com.